Welcome to the Chef of X podcast. I'm going to, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to a horse competition. So at the, hmm, that's funny because when I was applying to Davis, I knew someone who really liked horses. And they were like, you know, you can bring your horses to Davis, right? And I was like, yeah, I don't ride horses, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, but I thought of that conversation again, like, wow, actually, this is the person that that other person should meet eventually. Right, right, right. A horse person. You guys are both horse people. So um, we started talking a little bit, smoking a little bit, and then at some point, everybody wanted to hit the dance floor. Okay. So, uh, so, she, so she grabs me, and she's like, oh, come dance. And <laughs> me, personally, I feel like I'm at the stage of my life where, listen, I'm not trying to dance at no party right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> and that, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, try, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to kick back, design some shit, you know, yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I'd rather yeah. get in somebody's head than, you know dance around in circles so i'm like no i'm cool you know i'll just sit here but then something weird started happening where i was like this is actually inspiring like sitting here watching this shit because she could not dance okay but she could (laughs) she was one of those people who just felt herself you know right 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 and i was like wow you know this is uh this is an experience and I never, I, when I came, you know what I'm saying? Just speaking of how tangents can lead one thing to another, um, I was just sitting there thinking, like, how the fuck did I even get here? One. <laughs> oh, some random person invited me here. I don't know anyone here. I end up talking to someone about horses. Then this dance thing goes on. And somehow or another, I'm having a great time. I'm, I'm like, there's nothing, none of the leading up steps really, like, were things that I would look at and say, that's going to lead to something interesting. Right. And I'm not interested in horses, but now I kind of am. Huh. (laughs) You know, so I actually actually said, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. If I can get some some horse lessons out of this. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? If I can get some horseback riding lessons out of this, that's a win. Right, right, right. But, (laughs) yeah, it's kind of like, instead of trying to plan things that happen, you could just say, well... Let's just see what happens. And sometimes it's like the small little moves that you're making while things are going down end up leading to interesting things happening. And parties, that's what they're for. But um, it's true for conversations. It's true in life. It's true in a lot of situations where you don't always know everything, but you're like, well, who knows? Maybe I'll fuck around and see some horse lady dancing and it'll inspire me. Yeah, and it's, and it's funny that you that you bring up horses actually, because um, my uh, my ABI professor this quarter that he's all about horses. Like mm. he's like I'm a complete horse guy, this and this. And it, it, it's it's funny how how people are just there's people that are just like horse people, and that that's it, you know. And they're crazy about it, yeah. you know. And it's I've heard they're very calming, like to be around a really big animal like that. I don't know if that's the reason why I, these people are horse. People, I mean, but. I mean, perhaps, perhaps. I know. I think the last time I rode a horse, I took a. I took a vacation out in Cabo. I think it was like four years ago, mm. and we did a horseback riding, and yeah, those those things are they're they're massive creatures and they're they're beautiful, you know, and and they go fast. And I accidentally <laughs> like I fucked up, you know. The guy was like, you know, if you guys want your horse to go a little faster, because we was in, we were in like an open field, yeah. And then the guy, you know, the instructor, he had like five of us. Like, if you guys want to go a little faster, you know, there's a stick on the side, you know, just hit the horse a little bit on the back, you know, and and it'll go. Yeah. He's like, but be careful, don't hit it too hard. And, you know, my dumb ass, <laughs> I was on there and I was like, yeah, fuck this. I want to see what happens. And I, I hit the horse and I yeah. hit it a little too hard and my horse just started booking it. Yeah, like, yeah. it just charged. And I was holding on to that shit and I was like, holy crap. Yeah. And then uh, I remember, like, before he had told us that, hey, you know, if that, sh- you know, if that happens, you know, just pull on the horse and, you know, it'll stop. So I was going and, you know, in the beginning, I was kind of scared. I was like, oh, crap, this guy's booking it. But, you know, it was an open field. Yeah. Um, after I started feeling kind of calm and I just like pulled back the horse and it, it just kind of stopped that I was like, holy crap. Like, I, <laughs> but I was, I was kind of, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a good experience, but, um, yeah, they caught up to me after that and they were like, yo, what happened? I was like, you know, I, I fucked up. I hit the horse a little too hard and it took off. And then the guy was like, you know what? I actually, uh, I gave you a horse. I was a little more like, uh, <laughs> And I was like, well, thanks, shit. <laughs> He's like, yeah, all the other ones are a little calmer. This guy gets a little wild sometimes. I was like, oh, crap. Well, that was good to know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. But um, yeah, that was good. That, that was good. It actually, uh, that thing reminded me of that right now. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, that, was a, that was like a long lost memory that I hadn't thought about in a while. 
Yeah. But um, it was definitely a good experience. Mm. Yeah, it's funny how memory works in that way. I think that's this like the central joy uh, for me for uh, in general having conversations, but specifically in this way, is that I get to realize like what other people bring out of me, and for different people, it's different things. So uh, actually, I do have some topic that I wanted to discuss with you, which is bikes. So you, <laughs> so you have a really nice fixie. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and, you. Thank you. And I want to know, how did you get into that? And how long have you been into it? And what do you think of it? Like, uh, why are they interesting to you? Damn. That's crazy. Honestly, I don't think, I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. Or like, Well, I, yeah. used to, I used to bike back in the day. I used to bike back in like, I think I made my first fixie in 2011. Okay. And it was one of those where like I super glued like the uh, the the it was like a very it, a conversion bike. Okay. But I okay. super glued the cog onto the thing. Okay. So that if you pedaled backwards, it would actually unscrew. Okay. So it was dangerous, but it was like mesmerizing. No, definitely. So definitely. so I know a little bit about like the culture. Right. So I'm interested in like. What is it? What happened? What's your How background? It, uh, What's your background in that area? Damn. So fuck. Where do I begin? You know, I, I I rode bikes, fuck for since I was young. Since I was young, you know, my uh, my stepfather he taught me how to ride a bike, and you know, ever since then, like I've I've always found joy in it. I remember back then, you know, growing up, like none of our friends had cars. You know, there was no technology. There was none of these computers. Yeah. None of this like crazy crap. You know, all this. By like, the way, have you heard of the one wheel? The, the like the unicycle no it's it's an electronic thing with a fat tire oh and they and just a, stand on it like yeah, a hoverboard yeah. i've seen i've seen actually yeah. people in davis that riding around that that shit is wild yeah I, i've actually seen that yeah anyhow, yeah, yeah. anyhow yeah no technology i wanted to throw that in no, 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 someone no, no. interrupted a podcast recently with a one wheel really like we were talking and then they just rolled through the house <laughs> in one of those like, wait hold on <laughs> <the fuck? laughs> i was in san francisco oh, shit <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But, yeah. but um, um, yeah, man, like uh, just, you know, so we would spend a lot of our times outside, you know, outdoor playing with one another. And, you know, riding bikes was a way of getting to, you know, our friend's house, you know, get on your bikes. You know, yes. some of us had pegs. Some of us, you know, would give other people's rides and yeah. we'd just be going up and down. Yeah. My neighborhood Glendale, you know, just boom, just mobbing, you know, like four <laughs> or five kids on bikes, you know, like BMX. 14, 15. Yeah. We had BMXs. Yeah. I used to ride. Uh, that was the shit. Yeah, bro. Uh yeah, BMXs were dope. I had a, uh, my mom had bought me a really nice mongoose, mm -hmm. like really, really beautiful mongoose. And, and dude, I enjoyed that shit. It had pegs in the front and pegs in the back. That's dude. three people. Exactly. <laughs> and that's how we'd be rolling. <laughs> three people, you know, and it, 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 it was funny though, because, you know, like we're, we're young and stuff and we'd be like fucking around, like tickling people in the front or the yeah. person in the back would be tickling you. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, you'd be losing control. We, we, dude, we ate shit so many times, but yeah. you know, it, it was good times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, riding, riding bikes has always like, uh, been like a joy to me. Yeah. It's, it's always been something that I've enjoyed. And, um, yeah, I, I actually got that bike stolen. Um, yeah, I got that bike stolen and I kind of, the mongoose, uh. the mongoose bike. Yeah. The mongoose that I had as a kid, I think I was when I was like 14, yeah. 14, 13, I left it outside one day and like, uh, I woke up the next morning and it was just gone and I was like, yeah. Oh shit. But yeah, I, I, I actually didn't have a, that was my, damn, that was my last bike I ever owned for mm -hmm. a while until I got into fixies. So, um, how many years was that roughly <sighs> difference between the mongoose getting stolen and the first fixie? Honestly, it was seven years. Mm. It was seven, about, I want to say about seven years because I didn't get my first fixie at about, yeah, because I had my mongoose 13, 14. I didn't get my first fixie until around age 20. Mm. Yeah, so it was about six, roughly six, seven years or so. Like there was a gap. Yeah. Um, but um, at the time, at the time, like the, the fixie scene was really big, especially in LA. Yeah. Um, what year was that? So that I want to say, you know, I'm 26. So six years ago, 20, 2012, around 2012, 2011. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 2011. I, I, I was in, I was leaving high school at that time. Yeah. Yeah. That's right when I, that was the last year I rode Fixies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So around that time, you know, the Fixie scene was big, big in Glendale. Huge. Like it, they'd be like 
mobbing like you'd be you'd be seeing like gangs of bikes just exactly. mobbing and they'd be just fixies you know and they'd be going fast and like there's all there was all these youtube videos online and yep. all this crazy shit and i was like damn i had always wanted a bike you know i'd always wanted a fixie yeah and um i actually started working at a at a whole foods the whole foods back in my hometown yeah i started working there at the time i didn't have a car mm-hmm. and i had always wanted a fixie yeah so i decided that on my first check i would buy myself a bike yeah and it was going to be a single speed yeah fixie so i I went on craigslist and uh, i searched something up and um i found some guy uh, i think he was like about an hour away from me i can't remember the city but i I remember i drove a good like a pretty far distance to get this bike and it was only like a hundred bucks or something oh wow yeah it was like a it was a nice bike it had like a was it just straight bars Uh it was a white bike just really simple without even the part dipping up yeah no so it was a completely different bike than the one you see me oh, riding now shit. yeah the one yeah. That you, the those one straight th- bars look savage though yeah oh yeah 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 so yeah, yeah. I, I had that <laughs> i had that and um yeah i just I, I bought it off the guy and that was my means of like commuting to work you yeah. know i would i would ride i think it was maybe like two and a half miles to work yeah mostly i was working 40 hours so every day so i was i bought that bike and i'd go back you know i'd go to work from work and on my days off, I, I I would just ride. You know, I would yeah. rack up maybe like 30, 40 miles on my days off, just just riding my yeah. bike. You know, just putting on some headphones. You know, smoking some weed and just yeah, just dude. riding. Why is that so fun? What? Because I, I I got into biking uh, coming from skateboarding. Okay. But same thing. Why is it so fun to just listen to music and like move through space? You know, I think for me it's that. Um, I think it's the energy that's outside, honestly, and and being inside a vehicle. You're, you're constraining yourself from from the world, you know, yeah. from like life, you know, like you, you can't really see the trees around you. You can't really feel the air that's happening. You can't really like feel the sun on your skin. And I think that's one of the things that I enjoyed the most, you know, going outside on a nice day, you know, wearing your shorts, listening to some music and you're just riding, you know, you're feeling the wind in your face. It's hitting your hair like like the sun's beaming on you you're absorbing that vitamin d like and it and it, and it feels good you know and, yeah. and not only does it feel good but but you're also getting a workout out of it and that's and that's kind of like why i enjoyed it so much because i used to be a, a pretty heavy person you know mm. i used to weigh close to 200 pounds you know when i was 18 wow and um riding my bike i once i bought the bike riding my bike working at whole foods i i lost 55 pounds in total wow. yeah the weight just came off of me and it was because i was commuting to work yeah. And on my days off, riding my bike, and I would just, it, it was great for me. You know, I, I I did that, and the weight just kind of just came off. Yeah. And that was always something that I really felt, like, uh, like self-conscious about, like, my weight, you know, mm-hmm. being young. And, like, I felt like I was, like, fatter than most of the kids. And yeah. it was just always kind of, like, difficult for me. Mm-hmm. And then once I started riding my bike and, you know, like, I started feeling, like, better about myself. You know, I lost the weight. I my my body started functioning better. Like I, I I started, like I it was like I had a confident boost. Yeah. Just by that, and yeah. I you know I enrolled in school. I started going to school. You know all these things happened. You know because of that, because of that decision of riding a bicycle. You know yeah. and like that decision of riding a bicycle, working at Whole Foods and and doing all that just just led to me being here. You know for shit. Like I got a fucking tattoo, like of a bicycle on my (laughs) on the inside of my bicep you know because it's that meaningful to me you know it it really it 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 really changed my life riding a bike it yeah so i mean it's great you know i I love it i love it yeah and it's it's such a life hack because you're paying the the game changer between like uh skateboarding or even bmxing and fixies is that you can actually go places on a road bike oh yeah like it's hard to imagine what I used to always see people in Pasadena. I'm from Pasadena. And uh, they had these bike crews that always wore these bright, like white people wearing these bright orange shit. And I'm like, man, what the fuck are these, you know, what the oh, fuck shit. are these guys doing? Oh, shit. But then That's funny. Going That's around funny. the Rose Bowl and shit. But then when you ride one of those bikes, you realize, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm basically running at 25 <laughs> miles an hour right now. And I'm less tired. Uh, I'm less tired than if I were walking. Yeah. This is ridiculous. You know, it's so efficient. Yeah. So it really can, especially if you're working in town, completely replace your car. Oh, if yeah. You if you don't have to carry hella groceries. Oh, yeah. You know Definitely. I mean? It can replace your car. As far as, like, you getting somewhere, oh. 
game over. Yeah. Yeah. Because for me, I was like really into skateboarding in like 2007 to 2009. Okay. Doing tricks, jumping off of stairs, all that stuff. I wasn't really grinding much. I wasn't doing vert either. But I was more in the streets. And uh, at some point, I was like, this shit is done. It was really like my track coach that was like, dude, you're going to bust your shit and not be able to run track and you actually have potential okay so i was like all right this is what i'll do i'll just skate to get around because at the time i was taking the bus we had this bus that was like 25 or 50 cents in pasadena it used to be they still call it the free bus but it's like 50 cents an hour 75 cents (laughs) Um, but uh i used to take this shitty bus to get everywhere you had to wait everybody on the bus was like smelled like cigarettes or some shit yeah yeah yeah. it was a bad experience you know and it was the bus schedule was late even if you were on time the bus might be late right so i was like fuck that i got a skateboard i like the independence i'd rather just skate and see if i can get there at the same time as the bus and i live miles away from school but it was downhill so i would make it on time Uh, and after that i just pretty much avoided the bus completely Mm -hmm. fast forward and this was when I was on like a normal trick skateboard. Fast forward, I end up getting a longboard. Okay. And then really fuck the bus, right? <laughs> unless unless yeah. I'm going to LA. And even if I'm going oh, to LA, I'm taking the train. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, hell no, oh, right? I'm, I'm not even considering the bus anymore. <laughs> then oh, the fixies shit. came around. I'm seeing these white dudes, you know, go through. I remember I had an experience once where there was some kid who was like, he was kind of chubby. Uh, it looked like he was with his dad or something. And I was riding around. I might have been on a BMX. And uh, he was around the Rose Bowl. And he was like, let's race. And I had a shitty bike. And he had like a really nice bike, like a specialized road bike, all the gear. Right, right, right. And I almost beat him. And I was like, man, it's his bike. It's not him. (laughs) It's his fucking bike. (laughs) Like, like I got to get those magic wheels. So eventually my brother got into fixies. And then I got into fixies after that. Building that conversion bike where we just super glued yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. most dangerous <laughs> route. We just super glued oh, some shit. cog onto the wheel. Oh, it was like shit. a 27-inch somebody's grandma's bike that we took out of the garage. But that shit was so fun. Oh, hell yeah, And I was like, what the fuck? There's like a weird... It's more than just the road bike aspect of it because you're so connected. Definitely. That it's really an experience. It doesn't really make much sense. Um why it's so much more pleasing but after the smooth pedaling after just riding around downtown pasadena like late at night with my friends for so long i felt like man if i ever get a bike i'm getting a fixie right and um i i stopped i ended up going to alabama for three years i ended up in san jose on a, on a mini longboard da, 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 da. <laughs> but then i i came here and it's a bike town right I lucked up. One of the old domies left, and uh, they said, uh, hey, if anyone wants a fixie, you know, you can have my old one. There it is. Let's go. There it is. I I got a new tire for it, and I just haven't looked back, man. But that shit, I mean, I don't even have straps right now. So so when I got out of, like, back when I stopped biking, um, I had straps on my pedals, too. So I feel like I'm not going to really, you know. I got to come back where I left off on some level. No, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking either I'll get some straps for it or I'll just save up and, like, get some shoes and clip in. And clip in? Yeah. yeah. I never had that experience, but, like, one of my good friends clipped in all the time, just on his regular road bike. Mm. And he was like, you got to clip it. Like, you don't know what it's like to ride a bike until you clip yeah, in. Yeah, definitely. Clipping yeah. in is is different. I mean, shit, even... even I know clipping in is it's another level, yeah. but even having straps on your bike makes yeah. a big difference. Oh, you know, yeah. even even just being strapped on. And and funny thing, <laughs> <laughs> funny story about straps is, um, you know, I was... When I bought that bike, it had no straps, you mm. know, and I was, a, I was a rookie. You know, I was like, I had, you know, I, I was just riding around with no... <laughs> with no uh with no straps and you know yeah. la is pretty dangerous man riding yeah. around in la like you got to be pretty aggressive like I, mm. I you know it got to the point where i was mobbing through those streets i was going in and out of traffic taking yeah. red lights and you know that's just the, that's that's just, the norm of the and culture that's, exactly that's how it is. and that's how and that's how you ride in la you know yeah. and people look at me now that's up the here right way. exactly and people look at me now up here and they're like this motherfucker be going fast on that fucking bike yeah there's no fucking brakes <laughs> and i'm like you know that's just that's that's, that's how I, that that's how i used to ride back home so that's that's normal for me you know yeah. and and 
And, um, you know, going back to strapping, you know, I, I didn't I didn't have those straps in the beginning. And I remember I, I, I went out with one of my boys and we were riding around and we went up some hills and I'm like, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna bomb down this hill. And it was a pretty steep hill. And I don't know. I didn't I didn't think about not being strapped in. I didn't think about like I thought that I would I was going to be able to control the, the pedaling as I went down. Oof, oh, man. So, you know, on a single speed bike, you're constantly pedaling, you know, yeah. whether you're going uphill, whether you're going downhill, you know, it's conditioning at the yeah. end of the day. You know, there is no free will, as they call it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I started mobbing down the hill and I was like, all right, cool. I got this. I got this. And then the hill started going, getting steeper. And <laughs> it got to the point where like my feet were like off the pedals and like I was just mobbing down the hill. And there was, I, I tried to put my feet on the pedals and I just couldn't. Oh I God. just couldn't, bro. So I was literally just smashing down that hill. And then at the end of the hill, it was a street where you could either go left or you could go right. You couldn't go straight. That was oh, it. No. So I was in my head. I'm like, all right. I'm mobbing down this hill fast as fuck. Yeah. I could only go left or I could only go right. I got to choose. And if I go the wrong way, that I'm going to get hit. Yeah. So I remember my heart beating fast as fuck. Like I was just going down that hill and I was like, holy shit. Like I, I could potentially die right now. So I go all the way to the very edge of the hill to the left. And I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to just take a right. Like, yeah, I'm just going to take a right and just go for it. And I'm mobbing down the hill and I'm just like, hopefully there's no cars, hopefully there's no cars, hopefully there's no cars. And I'm getting closer, closer, closer. And I just remember like I make a right and I just shoot like down that hill. And I just there was luckily there was no cars, there was nothing. And I just like flew, dude. Like I remember my bike still kept going. Even after I was down that hill, my bike still kept going. And it took me a while for me to get control of that. And I was like after that, I was like, holy shit. My friend behind me was like, hey, bro, what happened? I was like, bro, I almost fucking died, dude. Like, yeah. I had no straps or anything. Like, and I didn't know what to do, you know? And yeah. it, so it's, it's dangerous riding those bikes, man. It's dangerous yeah. with no brakes, no nothing, especially when you don't have straps. So anybody out there riding a fixie, like, <laughs> you know, and trying to do some hills, like, get some oh straps because that God. it's dangerous, dude. So after that... I went to the local <laughs> bike shop and I got myself some fucking straps. So I was like, fuck that. Yeah. And, and, you know, ever, ever since then, I, I've been strapped in and, and it, it does make a difference, dude. And, and, you know, coming back to you talking about like the beauty of it or like, you know, the difference between a road bike and like a single street bike. Like I've ridden both, you know, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've ridden my one of my good friends back in Whole Foods had a Cervelo. Really, really yeah. nice bike. Like I think it was like a five thousand dollar bike. Mm -hmm. Beautiful bike. And he like every now and then he'd be like, Hey, you wanna go take it out for a ride? And I you know, I'd be out of work and he'd be still working. And I'd be like, Yeah, why not? Yeah. So I'd you know, I'd go cruise it around and then I'd just drop it back off and pick up my bike and and yes, it's nice having those gears, you know, it does make a difference. Like definitely. Yeah. It does dif it does make a difference and you could fly on a road bike. Like if if you yeah. picked up some speed and you put those gears down and I like, dude, you're you're going. You're yeah, going. Yeah. Whereas on a single speed bike, there's it's it's a single speed. There, you know, it's it's <laughs> one gear. You know, it's one gear. There's no free will. Your yeah. ass is constantly pedaling, and it's all on like your leg strength, like yeah. how far you can go and how much you could push yourself. Yeah. And and I think that that's what I like about it. That yeah. no matter where, whether I'm if I'm going uphill, if I'm going downhill, I I I made a commitment, so I gotta go with that commitment you know there's no like oh i'm gonna just like stop pedaling and just let the bike do its thing and just cruise down this hill no you're 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 going with the bike right you know yeah and the whole idea of strapping in like you're you're more connected with the bike right like when i first started riding and i would like and i started strapping myself in i i fuck i felt like i was putting on a fucking seat belt or something you know getting mm. into a car and like you know strapping myself into a car yeah. and I, it was the same idea for me like just you know strapping myself into the bike and you know it it, it was you know it's it was like a I can't even explain it, bro. You know, yeah. it, it was it was like the best feeling for me, yeah. you know, and and having said that, like, I love road bikes, you know, they're great. But just being on that single speed bike, like it's so light, you have no brakes, you know, you have pretty much no, it's just you on the bike, you know, mm -hmm. and it, and the bike is going to go as fast as your legs can go. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, yeah. That, and, and that's it, you know, that's and and, it. It, and it's crazy because like. Uh, you you brought up Pasadena, you know, like yeah. you seeing all these crews. I used to actually ride with the crew back then. It was oh, called yeah. uh, the Wednesday Night Outlaws. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was a, it was a group of about a hundred of us, and we'd meet up in um in Pasadena at the at the I Union might have Station. Heard of them. The Union, st wait. 
Huh. The, the, uh, right there where um, there's a, I forgot the bar. There's a bar right there, um, a, like around the Royal, a Royal Parkway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about. Right there where the 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 Humane Society Center is. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. by my old school. I yeah. went to Blair High School. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. It was, it's like around the corner from there. Okay. So. Yeah. So yeah, it was called the Wednesday Night Outlaws, and uh, you know, a good friend of mine uh, that I met through you know a, a local bike shop, he invited me out on Wednesdays and. I started going out with him, and it, it, dude, I, I used to have a blast, man. Like we'd ride from <laughs> Pasadena to LA, like we'd kick in at LA, you know, yeah. pop our beers, smoke some weed, we have some races, you know, yeah. like, and then either take the train back to Pasadena or all of us would mob it back to Pasadena. And yeah. I met so many great people there, and you know, met so like made really good friends, and just had like really good experiences doing that. And you know, it was, it was great. You know, it was great yeah. having like that that little community. You know, and yeah, and I loved it. I loved it. Do you feel like you have more energy at night? Yeah, I think so, man. I know I do. I think so, I, I don't dude. Get tired yeah, at all. I, at, I, night. at night, yeah, man. I did like, one of those Wednesday things, and we went to North Hollywood. Okay. Yeah, and it was like we were going up hills, and I was like, dude, this is. I feel like we've done like fifty miles, and I feel the same. I'm actually more <laughs> amped up at the end of it than at the beginning. So I don't know how that works, but maybe it's uh, like you know the wind's cooling me down or something. Right. But mobbing is an experience. Oh, yeah. We're like, Definitely. I look to my left, look to my right, especially if people are bombing with no brakes. Yeah. I always kept the brakes just in case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but oh, but to shit. see other people bombing with no brakes. Oh, you know, man. I feel like if I had, if I, if I clipped in, I could, and I built a bike from yeah. scratch, then I would go without brakes. Oh, yeah. But like the bike that I have now, it was a hand me down. I don't right. know if the crank might, you know, be on its last year or something. Right, right. <laughs> crank. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, oh that. shit that's funny now that yeah i mean yeah a lot of people tell me like shit even my friends back back then would tell me like uh even on my first bike so the white bike you know the white bike that i the, the white bike that i had um my friends would tell me dude you have no brakes on that shit like how do you stop like but what do you davis do this is so easy yeah to i mean davis here but back at home yeah you know back in la it was it was crazy and all my friends were like dude you're gonna get killed you're gonna get killed blah, oh, blah, gotcha. like especially especially riding like you know so aggressively because i was i was going dude fuck it you know i was going out and um yeah dude like uh i don't know it's just it, i i feel like it also like it's like that you know why why people like why do people like roller coasters you know because they, yeah. they they like that you know those endorphins the, yeah, yeah, yeah that adrenaline, adrenaline you know and, and and i like that you know mm-hmm. i i, I enjoyed that but it is it is dangerous you know yeah. it, it, it is dangerous but you also could skid you know i remember like skidding like whip skidding yeah. or, like you lock your legs you yeah. lean forward and you're just skidding like it, it, it's cool you know like i've eaten shit a couple of times doing it but it, <laughs> but it's fun yeah um especially in the rain but it's dangerous i remember riding down in, in the rain with my single speed and th- you have no brakes yeah. the back wheel to skid dude i was just hydro- hydroplaning though so, but i mean it, it, it's dangerous it's fun but <laughs> yeah <and I'd, laughs> um no breaks in the rain yeah Jeez. but it's yeah it, it, good times you know i haven't i haven't really done that in a while but uh yeah that was the first bike and then this bike the one that the the black one that i got i actually uh, i actually built that one myself yeah yeah that one seems like too much there's too much on there for you not to have, yeah. not to have built it yourself yeah. and that one is aggressive like you can see like the seat is like slammed up and then the yeah, drop bars yeah. in the front that yeah thing, that thing's built to like <laughs> m- make money in street race. do we have any street races here I don't, you know what this I is don't a know. bike town i, don't, I know we street races i know we have like a cycling club nah, at like nah, davis but i don't think I'm street races about 500 like, bucks that, that'd be that'd be dope like down Colvel, you know yeah, that just yeah. down Colvel or down russell just <laughs> mobbing this would be the perfect place in the world i don't know i mean maybe they do but shit i have it's, no idea yeah you have to probably know i have right no people. idea yeah yeah to set something up but um, i know one person on the bike club i'll ask him but it's yeah. like i think that they it's more of a sport right yeah right they're not trying to <laughs> do dirty races right 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 so how how was your experience with like fixie like you you like it you, uh, you've only been riding for how long like well so i rode for like two years and then i just started again okay like uh, less than a month ago okay but a lot of it translates from two years yeah the i mean the big thing is i i don't skid right now anymore back okay. then i did when i had straps. okay yeah 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 um yeah. i've never been brakeless but i am interested in it when i have like i build it up from scratch right um, there's a couple stunt things I eventually want. Like I know, I think you have an arrow spoke, right? Yeah, I have an arrow yeah, spoke. Yeah, me side. and my brother used to uh, debate on tri spokes. Okay, like whether or not we wanted to get one. But I knew this guy who had like a a quad. 
Okay. And it's just like, it's such a bike geek thing, but like, I want to do Like, I feel like I put no. in the time. Hell yeah. No, hell yeah. That, and that's why I got my arrow spoke. You know what I mean? It was, it was such like a, like a fad back at home. Like everybody had a fucking arrow spoke. You know what yeah, I mean? But yeah. it was like, I, I, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to really get myself bike, an arrow you spoke. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be different if I never rode a, a fixie, you know, I never ran a red light on a fixie going to school or something like that. But I have. I just haven't been doing it recently. <laughs> so I feel like, I feel oh, like, man. you know what? We're in Davis. Everybody has a bike here, beach cruisers, whatever. Like, I'm trying to stunt. No, yeah, no, definitely. And <laughs> Low key. Yeah, because no, Because I'm hey. not one of these new, you know, freshmen who doesn't know how to steer uh, a beach cruiser. Exactly. Like, there's a little bit of a history. And for me, I think it was mostly Pasadena cycling. But it was like a daily thing where it was like <laughs> me and my friend would race to school, the red lights thing, the off and on the sidewalk thing. Oh, uh, you know it was then. just you it know. was it was a part of our lives at that time. And now that I'm like in an environment where I can express that part of myself. Of course. I kinda wanna go out at some point. Yeah. Go all out and have some dope bike shit. Oh, hell yeah. So Hell yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean Not it, in the short term. This is I'm talking about a couple maybe a year from now. Right. But, I, when I see bikes like yours, it's like, oh, this is a piece of art to a bike person. Yeah. You know what I mean? The average Davis student might not notice, but it's like, <laughs> no, this is designed. Definitely. You know what I mean? There's a reason why this is this way. This means that. Yeah. These are decisions that I'm seeing that I'm kind of like, hmm, yeah, how would I design a bike? Yeah. No, <laughs> definitely, definitely. And, and, and it's, funny that, it's funny that you say that because... You know, you're the, you're, I think you're the second person that has actually, like, complimented my bike and actually, like, known, you know, about some of the components or what it has, you know? Yeah. And I don't, I'm not one to be, like, uh, you know, it's, like, showing off or be, like, yo, look, check out my bike, whatever, you know? If anybody yeah. comes and compliments me, cool, you know, I, I, yeah. I am so appreciative, you know, and uh, it makes me happy. And, yeah, you're the second person here in Davis who's actually been, like, yo, that's a dope bike. Like, yeah, yeah one of my, one of my homegirls, too, uh, my first year, she's, like, yeah, damn, that's a sick bike. Like, damn, you got this on it, you got this on it, you got a Thompson seat post, blah, blah, blah. And I was, like, oh, <laughs> shit, you know your shit. Like, okay, like, <laughs> I fuck post. with you. It yeah, goes like, down to the seat it, 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 You know, shit, you yeah, know? Yeah. It, it goes down to that, you know? Fuck it. It goes down to like yeah everything the seat post you know you got the thick slick tire in the back you know yeah. you got you got the aero spoke in the front you got the b43 in the back you know you yeah. got the lizard skin fucking grip tape the you know tape. like yeah it goes up <laughs> you know like the drop bars yeah everything everything you know yeah. like and it's and it's like like another cyclist recognizes that you know yeah. like and, and you're right like not a not a lot of people do like here in davis it's just like oh it's just a bike you know everybody bikes so everybody just gets whatever's there right you know but there are other cultures actually i just watched this documentary on bike messengers in new york okay it kind of got me this was before this i even got this fixie um or it was given to me or donated to me but um yeah, they were they were discussing, you know, this is the lifestyle, this, that, whatever. And some of them were explaining, this is why we do this. This is how we view that. And it really is, a for the people, I guess in summary what I'm saying is, for the people who, like, the fixie culture uh, really means the most to, they see it as an art form. Right. They see it as an art form. They're saying it's practical. It's practical to have a single speed for these reasons if you're in a flat place right oh yeah i think new york is pretty flat i don't know i've never been to new I, york I, mean, uh, I don't know but anyhow even if you're going uphill san francisco they do the same thing yeah so, they do, i mean yeah it's, it doesn't depend on being flat there's other factors that matter but it's easy to repair for instance it's very light for oh, instance definitely. there are a oh, bunch of oh, reasons oh, why messengers yeah. a lot of them gravitate toward it but then past that there's a beauty to it that i i feel like for me, skateboarding and biking had something to do with independence because you don't have to yep. own a car. You can get around without owning a car. And, you know, like I said, the bus system, it is what it is. The train system was all right. But, like, what if I want to dip out to somebody's house right now? Do I really want to go wait for a fucking bus? No, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather skate or get on Hell my yeah. fucking bike. So yeah, when yeah, you do yeah, get yeah, on yeah, a bike, yeah. when I felt like when well, I was in high school, like, <laughs> I do have a car. You know what I mean? Yeah. I basically do have a car. Hell yeah. And I want to have a nice car. That's And the beauty of it is it's a humble pursuit. Like, if I want to get a super crazy dope bike, how much is it really going to cost? Like, for me, if it's a fixie, it's not even going to be as much as that uh, Cervelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be pretty cheap. Right. Right? Even if I buy each part individually plus right. retail plus tax. Right, right, right. It's not like the same as getting a gold chain, but it is 
an expression of who you are on Definitely. some level. Oh yeah. You know, and yeah, I I just feel like uh that it's ironic, but it's a little lost in Davis because everybody has to have a bike basically that it's not um it's so practical that it's people don't really see the beauty and uh, I mean, what is a bicycle? It's like a metal thing that somehow you can balance on, right? <laughs> That it allows you to move through space so much easier with no gas. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, what? you're get- And it feels That's good. It's fun to sit on a bike and ride it and look at the scenery. It's like at a normal human pace. Human beings moving at 60 miles an hour, we can't even process what the fuck's going <laughs> on. <laughs> we can't even smell the fuck. The air would be, if we had no uh, windshield shit. in the car, you know what I mean? The air would be fucking suffocating us. No, definitely. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a very natural thing. It's innovation, but it's not it's not really stunting. It's not really like going outside of the lines. It's just kinda like a beautiful little thing and there's poetry in it. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. you you're completely right in that. And that's exactly why I built that bike. You know, that first white bike, I loved it. But I felt like I, I, I because I loved it so much, I wanted to build myself one. Because the one that I had bought from somebody else, yeah, I felt like it was mine, but I felt like it really wasn't mine, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like it was, it was under my ownership, but it it had a previous life. It had a previous owner, it had a previous writer, you know? And, and I felt like I needed to build something from the ground up that was actually mine, that I custom made, that it would, it, it, it spoke about who I was, you yeah. know? Yeah. It, it, it spoke about, you know, what I was doing and, and she's actually named uh, Alvira, you know, mm. one of my uh, old coworkers named her. Okay. Um, yeah, because she's all blacked out, you know? And, <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I love my bike. You know, I, I love my bike and I love mobbing on it and, and just, just the feeling of it, just being just being on there. Just It's it's great, dude. Like, I actually wrote a, a persuasive essay back in my community college on uh, on ri- why you should ride a bike. Mm. And one of the things that, uh, that I learned, which was most interesting, was that um, you're actually uh, taking in less pollution um, by riding a bicycle. Not only are you generating less pollution, obviously, because you're on a vehicle as opposed to a bike, but you're also taking in, breathing in less, um, less pollutants as well because mm. you're on the side of the road where as opposed to a vehicle, you're right behind the exhaust of the car in front of you. Mm. So that exhaust is in front, blowing out, and it's essentially going into your vehicle and mm. you're taking that in because you're inside the vehicle. Yeah. So by being on the side of the road, you're actually avoiding that pollutant. And you're going next to it. So, I mean, that was something that I actually, you know, I found was one of the most interesting topics that I talked about. Aside from, you know, burn grease, not gas. You know, you're, you're yeah. losing weight. You know, you're getting to point A to point B in a, in a pretty good amount of time, honestly. Yeah. Like you might be a little sweaty and all, but hey, that, that's actually the beauty of it too. You know, and, and you don't <laughs> yeah, have to spend, it. yeah. And you don't, yo, fuck it. Like, shit, you got to get out there. What's up, guys? Like, hey, fuck, you know? <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. so do you skid stop now or uh, how do you normally stop? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I skid stop. I do I do a variety of things. I mean, it all depends. I, I'll, I'll skid stop. Um, if if I know I'm coming to a stop at times, I'll just, you know, start like pedaling slower. Like yeah. if I'm pedaling fast, now I got to the point where with those straps, you could you could actually like, you know, stop yourself slow. I do that or I do like a like a hip uh, skid too, where I like pop the back tire and just like yeah. lock my legs and that like allows me to stop. Okay. Or, you know, for the, if I'm really mobbing, I, I just do the e-brake and I just, you know, unstrap one leg and you know, put it on the back of the tire. Yeah, and yeah. That's what I was you know thinking what I mean? of, like, way, yeah. during your story. It's like, oh, yeah, I, the foot on the back the, of the tire. Exactly. And, and, you know, I didn't think about that at the time, dude. Yeah. I was going down that hill and, and I did not think about doing the foot in the back of the tire. My ass was just like. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, oh, I was in a situation once. Now, I, this is a story from basically another time. But I was in, this is when I was like really on one. But uh, I was in San Francisco. And I was on a bike. Actually, it was a stolen bike. And I had on these dress <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and I, I turned left, turned right. And, I, of course, in San Francisco, there's always these big-ass hills. Oh, it was yeah. actually a main street. I forgot the name of the street, though. But um, I'm, I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, there's, like, a couple of signals that I have to get past. But I don't have any brakes, and it's a freewheel. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, so here he goes. So I fucking I'm going I'm just mobbing down the street and I'm like, <laughs> oh cool, I'll just use my I'll just use my foot to slow down. Okay. 
but I have on dress shoes. Oh, shit. So they have the heel sticking out and then the normal part. So I put the part like right in front of the heel okay. on my tire. So it's like wedged on my tire. <laughs> 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 I'm already going hella fast by the time I make this decision. <laughs> but in my head, I'm just thinking like, oh, you shit. know what? It'll probably turn green. You know, the odds are in my favor. <laughs> well, I'm mobbing down and it's not, the light's not changing. <laughs> so, and there are cars like parked up, oh, stopped shit. up. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it gets so bad that I'm like, you know what? Oh. I'm going to just go for it. So I take my foot off of the back. Oh, okay. Put them on the pedals. I'm freewheeling down this street. It's a red light. There's cars stopped. And I just like, I'm just like, well, you know, similar thing. I, there's a chance I might die, but I, pro- <laughs> but I probably won't. <laughs> but I probably won't. Oh, man. I make it through the next light. <laughs> and I, uh, I eventually stop. I think it just like evens out. And I stop and I look at my shoe and the whole like, it's basically like it dug in so deep that you could my tire was damn near touching my foot. Holy crap. And then the gets kind of weird because <laughs> that night I'm walking around in these boots and I see like a homeless man on the side of the road. So I say, "Hey, and I have on a bright blue jacket and I'm trying to get rid of it cuz I stand out and I just stole this bike." Right, right, right. So I'm like, uh, "Hey, I'll trade you uh shoes and you can have this jacket for free." And he looks at the shoes and he's like, I always wanted some dress shoes. Yeah. So we swap shoes. He has like some dusty ass boat shoes. And I just wore those boat shoes for the rest of like the next three days. <laughs> but I was thinking like he didn't notice that they were fucked up from the bike. He probably didn't care, he bro. He just care. Yeah, he probably didn't care. It's like, fuck it. They're dress shoes. I never had dress never shoes. Had it was a win-win. He got a jacket and some and dress he shoes. A hey, blue jacket. fuck it. Why not? You <laughs> hopefully, know? Yeah. Hopefully he didn't get arrested. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> But anyhow, yeah, I, I I forgot about it. But in the middle of the story, I was thinking, yeah, why not you do the foot trick? Yeah, yeah. But don't wear dress shoes if you're gonna do that. No, definitely trick. not. And it does fuck up your shoes, though. Yeah, it, it, it does fuck up. up your shoes. So if you're maybe doing some that, vans might last. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, uh, depending on how how hard you're pressing down and how fast you're going, you know. But um, yeah, I usually try to wear like shoes that I don't really care, you yeah. know, when I'm doing that, you know. And if I'm wearing shoes that you care, like I try not to really like you know, do that or just skid or whatever, or slow down before you get to a stop sign and stuff. But yeah, yeah they, it really does fuck up your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> like again, another beauty of riding a single speed bike, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, you're the, the whole idea of like propelling yourself is a powerful metaphor too. Hmm. of like, Hey, I am able to get myself places. Hmm. Hmm. And you can do that with a car, but it's just another thing when you don't have to pay out the ass for gas. No, honestly, <laughs> it makes a big ass difference, dude. And and living out here in Davis, like you could get anywhere in yeah. Davis on a bike. Like when I'm up here, I I put like ten bucks of gas, and that'll last me maybe like a month. Yeah. I'm serious because I'm not on it. You know, I go to school on my bike, I go home on my bike. You know, you know, every now and then you drive down to go get groceries, but even then, that's not even that far. And you know, you just park your car, and then that's it. So yeah, it, it, it's good. It's good, but yeah. Would, would you bike um, to Woodland on a single speed? Yeah, I'd be down. I yeah. actually, I actually did. Um, there was an event at Whole Foods before I came up here last year. Um, it was called the LA River Ride, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, that the, sounds the, fun. The LA River Ride. I did it with one of my friends, and um, he had a road bike, and I had my, you know, obviously my single speed bike, and mm-hmm. we and we racked up 50 miles. Wow. Yeah, we racked up 50 miles. It was 25 in and 25 back, and. I remember I was I was beat at the end, but I was like, <laughs> shit, I was honestly, I was happy that I made it because yeah, I was one of yeah. the first, like I was one of the few people that were, that was doing it on a single speed bike. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty intense, man. Like yeah. it, it's pretty intense riding a single speed bike. It's a lot of conditioning. Like mm. I said, you're always pedaling. Like you're, you never stop. There's no, oh, I need to take a breather right now. Like, yeah, you could pedal slower, but you're still, you're still moving those legs. You know, you're <laughs> still going. <laughs> I always did, since I don't have straps, especially I always do the scooping movement because I feel like once I get the momentum, I, if I just pedal the right way, then it's not as much energy to keep it up. Yeah. But if I had straps, I feel like I'd be pulling up and pushing down. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I can't pull up right now. Exactly. And see, and then you pull up, you push down, and, and even that makes a huge difference. So now when you're clipped in, not only can you pull up, push down, but you could also push forward and pull back. Mm. So that gives you even more power, yeah. you know, and that keeps you going. 
Mm. But but yeah, strapping in is also sometimes dangerous if you've never like clipped in or not because you could literally like at a stop site you could just yeah. tip over on your bike. <laughs> do you track stand? <laughs> I do, I do. But that's bit me in the ass one time. I just like <laughs> I, I've been like track standing and like at a red light and like I, I started losing balance and I couldn't unstrap myself <laughs> and I literally just fucking tipped over in front of a light in front of a car. Oh wow! And I get up and I get my bike and I look at the the person behind me and they're just right there like cracking up in wow. their car and I was like, hey, you know. Oh, fuck it and i was like i laughed it off too and then i just kept going but <laughs> i used to love biking next to cars and then seeing kids waving at me look at them go yeah. yeah yeah i actually would um i would actually hold on to cars back in back at home oh, back in no. la yeah man like i don't know if you ever did that but i'd ride next to them especially if they were like pickup trucks because you yeah. could easily just hold on to their back mm -hmm. and dude i'd be like at, at times actually i was doing it back then but i wouldn't do it now yeah i mean <laughs> i haven't done it in a long time it's, it's yeah. dangerous man yeah. it's 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 really dangerous and uh, yeah just you know you're riding next to them they're picking up you hold on to their bike and you're just <laughs> mobbing with them you know and it's just it, it, it's fun some people get mad though some people are yeah, like looking yeah. at you through their mirror and they're like what the fuck you doing you know and you're just right there like oh shit and then you let go and you're just like a slingshot you just boom you yeah, just fly yeah. but nah, i saw I, my brother do it with a metro bus in la a metro bus yeah. oh shit but i was like nah that's just too wild yeah <laughs> <laughs> just oh too wild. man oh man that's funny yeah damn good times dude i haven't I actually it's i haven't thought about any of these things in a in a very long time in a, in a very long time and it, it 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 realizing it again that it, it made me who i am now you know and I'm, I'm very appreciative for that very appreciative for that and very appreciative for you for like allowing this space you know to happen uh, yeah no problem this is um this was destined <laughs> <laughs> i believe it honestly yeah. i i believe it i'm i'm, I'm very huge into um you know, you, you attract what you put out there or just ideas that you've had, you know, or, or things that you've thought about. You you meet the right people at the right time. You know, meeting you was no coincidence. You know, I don't I don't believe in coincidences in the universe. You know, you we were we were meant to meet for a reason. And, you know, now it was up to us to either like dive into what our relation was supposed to be and explore that and see what it could you know what what how it could benefit both of us or just ignore it you know and a lot of the times like people choose to ignore it you know they meet somebody like they talk to somebody and they don't and they don't build that connection and then we're we're, we're humans and we're put here to build those connections with people and help one another you know and 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 hear what somebody else has to say because we all come from a, a different life you know we all yeah. come from different experiences different things that made us who we are today and and hearing somebody else out could really give you a perspective on your life yeah yeah it's very uh it's scary to be vulnerable like it's scary to be in a situation where you're like i uh i need this or i feel this because it's so like taboo i feel mm. <laughs> mm. that it's it, it but that's kind of what it takes to to have some kind of a connection um yeah what like one of the things that i feel that i'm working on now is that I like I was saying, I interact with different people in different ways. Right. But I don't really know uh I I'm prone to I a lot of times I'll go too far first. Like I'd rather go too far <laughs> and then apologize than like not go far enough. And I'm especially in this situation, whenever I'm talking to someone who's like uh a creative type, like someone who's like, Hey, I have some crazy idea that I wanna do then uh Sometimes I'll default into a certain mode where I really want to, like, give somebody tough love. Mm. And one of the things I'm realizing is, like, well, this is, like, it would, it would actually, like, for me, I'm interpreting this whole interaction as me being vulnerable or in the situation oh, yeah. I described. In Definitely. the situation I described. Definitely. Like, I, I can feel as if, if I share something with someone about uh, what I think, I feel that I'm being vulnerable. Right. But what I'm realizing is it's actually, like, people really do not want to, <laughs> people don't want to be in a situation where they're getting where they feel like they're getting attacked either. Hmm. So I, I'm usually in a, in a spot where I'm like, well, I'm hurt because you're hurt. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm doing something that I feel is putting myself out there. But your response, which is perfectly normal, right. 
is showing me that you don't like that. Mm. So mm-hmm. now I'm like, okay, I won't do that. But then now I'm not going to be as open. Right. Because that was me being open. Right, right, right. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think just on the note of, you know, figuring out where things go, right, from any interaction, like moving forward, I, I feel like uh, a part of the challenge for me is just realizing, like, what the effect is on someone else. Right. You know, like I might want something to go in a certain direction, but I need to be open to the fact that maybe they don't. And maybe mm. they maybe they want like it to take longer or whatever. So, you know. Well, I mean, I feel like people could only meet you as far as they've met themselves. You know, mm. you might be this open person. You might want to, you know, seek out something or say something. But, it, you know, the, the person can only reach you as far as they've reached with themselves. You know, and some people aren't ready for that, you know. Yeah. And and I feel like that's OK, too. You know, and and I think that you should be your raw self, your raw form and. And if and if somebody's not okay with it, well then shit, that doesn't mean anything either. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't you know say anything about you. Like it's just maybe the interaction wasn't supposed to be that way, or maybe it wasn't supposed to go that way. And you know, it th- that's or maybe that's exactly what was supposed to happen, and that was it right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like maybe after that, like y- y- shit, you realize something, they realize something, and just e- even that, like might have changed their life, might have changed something in you and, and maybe made you a better person, maybe shit, made them a better person. Yeah, that's true. Like even those little things, you know, I read I read a book once called um, The Celestine Prophecy and it talked about like uh, building connections with people and um, being vulnerable actually, being vulnerable to and, and just being open. Like in order for, for, for us to both grow, we, we have to be open with one another. We have to be vulnerable with one another, you know, and, 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 share our experiences you know and 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 not try to like hide anything you know what's the point of hiding something what's the point of not really being open with yourself and 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 sharing who you are and and your struggles and and what that made you who you are you know that that's actually that's beautiful you know because of all my struggles because of all my pain because of everything that i've gone to i i'm here today you know and and that's a beautiful thing i think and and a lot of people they 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 don't want to they feel like they don't want to share that you know and and they don't want to say it and and I think it's also because um, some people just don't understand or some people don't care to take the time to understand or even just listen to somebody else. You know, I was talking to somebody earlier today that people sometimes just need to, to be heard. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's huge. I agree with that strongly. <laughs> I th- actually, I, one way that I frame this podcast is allow people to say whatever they want to say. But I, what I mean by it is that everyone wants to say something. Right. They just don't, they don't always know what they want to say, or they just don't realize that they have something to say. Right? People have things to say. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just like you got to get. What are they going to talk about? Whatever they want to say that day. Yeah. Hopefully. Exactly. <laughs> and, and best and case see, scenario. Yeah, and see shit in that way. We both grow and we both learn yeah. about one another. You know, like I share with about you my experiences. You share with me your experiences, and you know yeah. we have a we have a laugh about it and and shit <laughs> like, you know, like it it, it builds a, it builds a relationship. You know, it establishes yeah. something. And, and, that's, and that's one of the things that the book mentions, that we have to build these connections with people. That one of the biggest signs that somebody needs to tell you something is eye contact. Mm. We make eye contact all the time with people. You know, you just lock eyes. And, and that's, that's the universe telling you that, hey, maybe this person might have something for you. Maybe this person needs to teach you something. You know, and, and shit, a lot of the times you talk to the person and you get to know them and... and you learn to love them or you learn to, you know, really learn a lot from them. You learn to grow and then they might become your good friend. They might not. At the end of the day, like you grew, you, you changed, you, you, you were a different person before you met them. And now you're a different person after you met them. Yeah. And that's the beauty about life. You know, we meet all these people, we make all these like connections and, you know, some of them are here to stay and some of them are here to go. But at the end of the day, those, those connections that we make, they, they change us and they help develop us. Yeah. And they help us grow, you know, and they help us understand, most importantly. Yeah. And one of the things that's sad about school is there's so many ways to learn. You know, I, I personally feel like people sharing things with me and struggling through something are my two favorite ways to learn. Mm. But uh, those aren't really 
uh, a part of a part of the equation. I, you know what I mean? I was just doing some chemistry homework. <laughs> it had nobody was telling me anything about like the struggle of coming up with something. And the, well, I was learning the second way because I didn't want to do it. Right. But I was forcing myself to do it, so I learned. Hey, even uh, it's a lesson everyone has to keep learning. Even though I don't want to do something, I can still do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's called discipline, and there's a reason why it's it's valued. It's not. A, it's hard to build it up. You yeah. Know? So hopefully, I I have increased my discipline a little bit by doing, finally doing my chemistry homework. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there it. it for me, I, I am uh, very grateful that like uh, I get to learn from people that people are are willing to um, you know share whatever they're willing to share. Yeah, <laughs> because it is a, it's a it's one of the coolest ways, in my opinion, to learn anything. It's like some weird kind of free flowing experience where I leave thinking about stuff I wouldn't have been thinking about. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely, and, and there's a, there's a great place to do it. There's a great place for that. Yeah. You know, and, and having that and doing this with other people, like you you can make great friends. Like shit. Like yeah. You know, you it's all about connections. It's yeah. all about connections. It's all about helping helping another person. And this might just be what people need. Like I said, people need to be heard. Sometimes people people need to say things. You know, sometimes people bottle things up and they don't want to say it and they don't want to say it. And maybe there's a great way to get people to say those things, things that are bothering them, things that are in their mind or whatever, get their ideas flowing and, and really like manifest, you know, manifest something that they want, manifest the life they want do, do, or change the life if they're not happy with it. Yeah. But, yeah. I feel like somebody was about to walk in. Well, we can uh, wrap things up right now if you want. Yeah, that, that, okay. definitely. With the most important, the most important question, question in the universe. In the universe. Oh, <laughs> Bug or slug? Bug or slug? Yes. I'm going to have to go with slug. That's right. Chef said the Chef of X podcast. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Mm, delicious. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Here's a quick message from our one and only sponsor, True Facts. True, true facts. facts. We, we said, said it, it, therefore, therefore it's true. true. You know what's good? It's the young sheep. I just wanted to give a quick shout out and testimonial to my brothers at True Facts. You know what I'm saying? True Facts is the only online news source that I can trust. They already figured it out, man. They post real sh- only. The shit I agree with, you know what I mean? You never got to worry about checking those sources with True Facts. They got it done. Plus, they got some real niggas and bad bitches working up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to True Facts. True, true Facts. facts. We said it, therefore it's true.